We've gone into detail about E and pi in our other videos. You can check those out in the description. But what are they? 2.71? 3.14? There are plenty of ways to approximate and visualize these numbers, but how can we classify them? Let's go back to the basics. Counting. 1, 2, 3, and onwards. This gives us the natural numbers. We can make an entirely new set, the whole numbers, by adding on 0. And adding on the negative numbers gets us the integers. But there's still plenty of spaces left in this set. We can fill these in with real numbers, numbers we can visualize. I can owe you 375 because you sold me one and a half oranges. To learn about imaginary numbers, follow the link in the description. Let's take a closer look into these real numbers. Say I walk into a bakery and I ask the baker for pie cakes. Not approximately pie, exactly pie. The confused baker could take out three cakes and give me all of them, but that would be too few. He could take out seven cakes, cut them into two groups, and then give me one of those groups, but that would be too many. He could take out 22 cakes, cut them into seven groups, and give me one of those groups, but that would still be a little bit too much. The baker can keep trying with different amounts of cuts from different amounts of cakes, but he'll never get me exactly pie cakes. If some number c is equal to a over b, for any a and b that are integers, then c is called rational. Since there are no integers a over b equal to pi, pi is irrational, so our baker is sadly out of luck. Irrational numbers can be found all around the world, in many different applications. So when you come across a number that you can't put in a fraction, don't get mad, just get irrational.